One of the most time-consuming tasks in any 3D application is UV unwrapping, but it's also among the most important tasks. Without UV unwrapping, you can't use textures. Bye-bye PBR materials, forget about texture painting. Uh, all you can do is use procedural materials that are not based off UVs, which greatly limits what you can do. So today, we are going to take a look at a standalone UV unwrapping program that is dedicated to UV unwrapping and how it compares to Blender. Unfortunately, this is not free, uh, but comes with a free trial of days where you can use it as much as you want. Since it's quite fast at UVs, you can collect all the models you need to UV, UV, unwrap them within that 30 days, and you are good. Anyway, the price should not be a problem if you are doing 3D on a professional level, as this will save you a lot of time. Let's fast take a look at how UV unwrapping works in Blender and what sort of problems we are trying to solve with this program. By the way, it's called Rezum UV and has two different modes. What you want to use is the Virtual Spaces mode if you're using it for art. You can choose this option when opening the program. So what I have here is a gun model that is made from different parts. To properly UV unwrap it, I need to create seams that let Blender know where to cut the model to lay it out flat. Remember, the purpose of UV unwrapping is to open up your model and map it onto a 2D plane because textures use 2D coordinates. So if we want to add them to a 3D model, it's only possible if we remap the 3D model to a 2D plane as well. That's why UV unwrapping is not necessary when it comes to procedural shaders, since these use 3D coordinates like the 3D model they are applied on. UV unwrapping is easy. All you have to do is set some seams and use the unwrap features to unwrap the model. Blender is quite good at this. The problem is that it's a repetitive task. Like here, I'm unwrapping a part of the gun in just a few steps. I'm adding about three seams, then UV unwrapping. Quite simple, right? But the gun is made up of many parts, and I would have to do the same thing over and over. Blender lacks the tools to automate this process. That's why programs like Rhizome UV exist in the first place. If I apply a UV grid onto the gun to see how the textures look, at first glance, everything looks okay. But on close inspection, you start to see some texture stretching. Another reason why the UVs here don't look that bad is that I got the model from Sketchfab and it already came with its own UVs. So let's reset the UVs and do a quick unwrap in Blender. Now you can see more stretching than what we had before. Uh, let's open Rhizom UV and see how quickly it gives us a usable UV in just a few seconds. To get started, go to File and then Load to import your project file. Make sure it's an FBX or OBJ file. You can hold down the Alt key while dragging in the viewport to orbit in the 3D view around your object. You can zoom in by holding Alt and the right mouse button, moving up and down. Turn on the checkerboard texture to check for stretching on the model. Because we have not UV unwrapped the object yet, we see no change. So let's add some automatic seams by switching to the seams tool. Don't touch the settings and execute with the first option. This will select and create seams based on the edge angle or sharpness of your mesh. You can now use the second button to automatically UV unwrap the mesh. It takes a few seconds. This won't pack your UVs, so most are over each other. So let's use the last button to automatically pack them. Nice, that was all done in three clicks. You may want to make some edits yourself, so let's see how to add new seams or remove some. In the Tools menu, you have some selection tools, including a Mesh Island tool. Use this to select any UV island. You can see the cylinder was split into two islands. I would prefer it to be one, since that, that makes it easy to texture, and the UVs would be more organized. So I will use the Edge Selection tool to select one edge of the island. If that edge is a seam, Rhizome UV will show me its neighboring edge or where it would be connected if it was not a seam. Let's make it not a seam by using the Weld tool. Now we have a single island for the cylinder. We can try this for other islands we want to merge. You can double-click an edge to select the entire edge loop it's connected to, or select one edge and hold Shift to create a path selection from that edge to the other. Unweld, but they are on top of other islands, so let's pack the UVs again. And now we are ready to export. Go to File, and then Export. There are a lot of settings here, but the only one we care about is the Mesh Export settings. Enable the OBJ file export and export. The mesh is going to be exported to the folder it was imported from with a suffix of export. Now you can import it into Blender and apply a UV grid to check the UVs. I think for something done in 60 seconds, this is amazing. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.